Sugar Radio, in association with Performance Works, are proud to present Gamble. Some scenes may contain strong language. Listener's discretion is advised. No, you're not listening to me! If she'd been in jail the whole time, there's no way she could have laundered that money! Her stock was on the way out from the second she invested in those hotels in the low-rent part of town. She had clear motive to start embezzling from the war. Oh, please! You are clearly missing the fact that with no alternative, she moved all of her assets to one position. To protect her own interests, which quite clearly rules her out of any wrongdoing. I am missing nothing. What's this then? Making good ground on the Vanderbeg case, I hope? Not quite. Still arguing over a particularly ferocious Monopoly game from last night. Oh, I should have expected as much. It was only ferocious because you and your bitch sister cheated and teamed up on me. It's the Bacharach family tradition. So, uh, far be it from me to interrupt in this little competitive competition... But you do know that case where we have to find a murderer and expose the board of an international corporation and police department as being more corrupt than the backroom poker game of Robert Mugabe's house? Any advances on that? Sorry, I totally zoned out there. Were you talking? You just have one of those voices, you know, like a fridge humming or TV static. You could make a fortune sale in New Age relaxation CDs. And uh, far be it from me to question your choice of metaphors, Daryl, but I'd have gone for more corrupt than a Sega Mega Drive cartridge left next to a magnet since 1994, myself. You know, it's just one of life's little miracles that you have ever had consensual sex with another human being. One man's miracle is another's amyl nitrate. Look, please, could you both maybe give some thought to following up on the financial leads that Miss Rumford provided regarding Trent Vanderberg's will? Mm Mm-hmm. We'll get right on that as soon as Ross here admits he shafted me out of those blues. Ooh, speaking of blues, Naomi, how are you getting on with that little deal we had? It's nearly been a week and you still haven't delivered. Listen, bossy the gay cow, if you want the good stuff, you can wait a little longer for my hookup at the hospital to get them for me. Otherwise, feel free to buy the mail-order herbal crap online. I'm sorry, are you... Are you dealing drugs in the office, Naomi? Sure, if you call Viagra a drug. Which I do, because it is. Just so you know, for the record, it's not what I need. It's just, you know, recreational. And Naomi used to be a nurse, so it's a safe option. A nurse? Really? Student nurse. I get kicked off the course before I graduated. What for? For stealing and selling pills? I don't know. I just don't understand how Pinnacle Investigations maintains its reputation for excellence when we have this sort of sordid going on around at the HQ. Never judge a book by its cover, Daryl. First rule of detection. Yeah, especially if that book has a completely different cover, which in fact belongs to an entirely different book. Meaning what? Well, you know how maybe you've got the cover of National Geographic, but actually inside it you were reading Hustler? Well... Imagine you thought you were working what for... Na- what Naomi means is that although it looks like we're doing nothing, this is just our tried and tested work method. Our own particular modus operandi, if you will. And give us, say, an hour, and by we I mean Naomi, we'll get right on to those financials. Oh joy, more leg work for me. And what lovely legs they are. Well, detective, maybe if you helped out more with the financials, this would go a little bit faster. It may have escaped your attention, newbie, but my speciality is forensics, okay? Just bring me something to forensicate and I'll do my bit. I I don't know if... That's right, you don't. You're new and your enthusiasm is touching and everything, but it's far from infectious. Good morning, everyone. Your chipper this morning, boss, back with the wife. No, I'm not. Hence my uncharacteristically sunny disposition. What's going on here, then? Is that the unfamiliar smell of blood, sweat and tears in the air? Nothing of the sort. Naomi's just venting her frustration after her humiliating Monopoly defeat last night. Why don't you and your sister eat a family-sized bag of dicks? Oh, no, Naomi, calm down. Mind, what happened when Palmer beat you at chess that time? Palmer? He doesn't work here anymore, shall we say. Well, keep up the good lack of work. 
Turns out these daily rates are keeping me in quite the fancy digs. And the longer we can drag this case out, the longer I'm on the bachelor's holiday from the potential aneurysm with tits. Wow. That might have been the most offensive thing I've heard all week, which is quite an achievement. Lighten up, Detective Potts. You're in charge of a career-defining, ongoing investigation. The world is your oyster. And that's the thing, sir. There hasn't been much in the way of actual investigation. Detective Potts. Are you suggesting the investigation is being deliberately stalled? Yes, I am. Well now, this is clearly a serious concern and one which must be dealt with, Potts. Come with me. Oh, well, it's nice to see someone's eager. Where are we going? The Houston Tavern. The, the pub? Is it a bit early? Spoken like a true newbie. Think of it as a breakfast meeting, if you like, but with more gin. If you think that's the best course of action, then... The first rule of detection, gin is always the best course of action. Let's go. And you too. Yes, boss. Just whatever it is I'm paying your salary for. Keep it up. You know me, boss. Eager to please. So the graffiti in the Houston Tavern's bathroom would lead me to believe. Ooh, burn. Come on, Potts. I'm telling you, Detective Potts, this is a life. A quiet drink before noon really gets the old noggin working. Oh, and what's that you've got drinking there, sir? A G&V. Do you mean G&T? Well, it's like a G&T, but you replace the tonic with vodka. Oh, and drink it from a pint glass. It's the true connoisseur's way. Now, why don't you tell me what it is exactly that's troubling you? Well, sir, I mean, where to begin, really? Well, you know, we've been working on this case for a week now and made almost zero progress. I wouldn't say that. You got those financial reports from Lacey Rumford snuck out of the Vanderburg house, didn't you? Yes, but, you know, you see, um, I've been trying to arrange a meeting with Marianne Vanderburg, and, um, well, she's just really rather difficult to pin down. That's the problem, Detective Potts. When you're in the police, people might think you're a bastard, but they're legally obliged to talk to you regardless. But when you're a private investigator, they think you're a bastard and can treat you as such with impunity. You need to be thick-skinned for this job. Well, the thing is, you know, I was hoping that Ross or Naomi would, um, you know, look into the financials for me, share the burden, as it were, but I'm afraid to say that, well, none of them are being much help, and I just don't think that they respect me at all, sir. <laughs> well, of course they don't. Look at you. You're wetter than the front row of a One Direction concert. Well, don't you think that's just... Ach, man up. If you want Ross and Naomi to respect you, quit tiptoeing around them. Exert your authority. Ross, he's basically just a big child. A large, petulant, gay child. And Naomi, well, she's pretty much like that cat. Utterly useless. Impossible to control. Pukes and craps everywhere. But still all right to have around. Naomi defecates in the office. It's a metaphor, you plonker. Though, there was that one time that I found a suspicious stain on the carpet by her desk. But she claimed it was a coffee spill. Anyway, the point is, separately, they're a nightmare. If you give them an inch, they'll take a bloody mile. But together, they're like a pack of hyenas. They'll sniff about you and growl. And the first sign of weakness, they'll rip you to shreds. You need to change your whole approach to leadership. Especially with those two. Authority through intimidation. Be less Daryl Potts and more Paul Pot. Oh, right. So, um, you know, be seen as a dictator? Fear is a wonderful motivator. Come on, have a drink. Get some Dutch courage about you. And you'll stroll back into that office and you'll give them hell. Oh, well, you know, if you think that's the best course of action. Of course I do. You'll thank me. Now, what are you having to drink? Well, um, I suppose I could have a, a white wine spritzer. Christ, that'll go well with your vagina. Come on, have a man's drink. Right, um, yes, you're quite right. Manning up, as you say. Tell you what, um, give me a white wine and hold the spritz. There you see. It's like watching the Hulk transform before your very eyes. And a packet of... No, no. Make that two packets of pork scratchings. Look out, world! Here's a new Daryl Potts in town!
Here you go, Naomi dear. Coffee for the lady and... Ooh, the mail's arrived! There's a large padded envelope here addressed to you. Oh, prepare to get happy, Ross. Your merchandise has arrived. Ooh, fantastic! Wait, why did it get posted? And why did it get posted here specifically? Are you crazy? Couldn't you have got it delivered to your house? Are you crazy? Like I'm going to get illegally stolen pharmaceuticals delivered to my own address. Yeah, okay. Come on then, let's have them. Nah, 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 nah. Hold on there, Eager the Beaver. These aren't all for you, you know. I have other clients. Well, could you hurry up? I don't want the boss to walk in on us with a bag of stolen Viagra pills. I know he's been uncharacteristically cheery these last few days, but I doubt he'd take kindly to this kind of thing going on at his office. Psh! He's got money in his wallet and he's at the pub. I'd be surprised if he turns up again this week. Here you go. 25 magic little blue diamonds. These seem bigger than I'd thought. Look. Give me that. Yeah, these bad boys are like the Chuck Norris of hard-on pills. I think I undercharged you. Well, I'm not paying any more. Figure of speech, hun. Yeah, you should probably only take about half of one of these at a time, okay? These look more like they're from a stud farm than a pharmacy. Oh, damn it! Shit! Boss man! I didn't expect to see you here so soon. Everything alright? Nothing going on here at all? Not at all? <laughs> As it happens, Detective Bacharach, Detective Potts has something he'd like to say. Isn't that right, Detective Potts? <laughs> yeah, yep, um, quite. I think, um, you know, I'd like to, um... Hang on. Let me get comfortable. Wells! You see? You see right there? Just what happened? Did you see that? That's it. That's what I want. What are you bumping your gums about? Are you drunk? Almost. In fact, um, yes. There is a scene you asked. That's what I want. What? Respect! I'm in a position of authority and you two treat me like a, like a bloody joke. All just because I'm new here. Oh, Daryl, sweetie, come on, don't take it personally. Just because we might ignore everything you say and mercilessly tease you and make fun of you behind your back and post pictures of you in the toilet on potstopian.com doesn't mean we don't respect you because you're new here. Not at all. It's just that we don't respect you because of your whole personality. Oh, for God's sake, Naomi. It was a joke. Go on, Detective Potts. And now, here and now, I'm laying down the law, okay? As far as this investigation in goes into Trent Vanderberg's murder case... I'm, well, well, I'm Paul Pot. What? I mean, I'm the man, okay? And I <laughs> demand to be kept informed of everything. And when I ask you to do something, well, well, jolly well say hi-ho. Well, this is certainly the most surreal pep talk I've ever had. I've got to respect that. Are we all on the same page now, people? Oh, is this the National Geographic Hustler metaphor again? What? Yes, we are, boss. Good. Which reminds me, Daryl? Uh, yes? While you were away, Marianne Vanderberg called for you. She said she had a brief window this afternoon at three o'clock to see you if you still wanted to speak to her. Uh, what? Yeah, there's a note on your desk, but in the spirit of newfound respect, I thought I'd tell you before you saw it. I'm just doing my bit around here. But, but that's less than two hours. The Vanderberg estate is nearly an hour's drive from here. I couldn't possibly drive after all that wine. One and a half glasses, by the way. Small glasses. Oh, God, I need to sober up. Uh, whose coffee is this? No, wait, there's... Oh. Hmm? Never mind. Right, Detective Potts. Go splash some water about that pasty face of yours and smarten up. Then get Detective Wells here to drive you out to meet Mrs. Vanderburg. Now remember, in all likelihood, she's a cold-blooded killer who put six bullets in her husband's back in order to claim his fortune. So how would you go insulting her? Naomi. Aww. Let Detective Potts lead the interrogation. You just sit back and... Whatever. Let's go, people! Right, well, um, I have to use the bathroom. I'll be two shakes. Technically, any more than three is... Detective Wells? Mm -hmm. If Mrs. Vanderberg confesses, mm -hmm. convince her not to turn herself in. Well, at least for a few days, all right? I think someone's enjoying the high life a little too much. Put it this way, Wells. If I'm happy, you're happy. Clear? Crystal. Right, um, Naomi, shall we go? Lead the way. This should be fun. Oh, Daryl, go easy on Mrs. Vanderberg. Try not to be too hard on her. <laughs> okay, well, um, wish us luck. Daryl. 
Yes, Naomi. Do you smell that? No, what? Do you smell that? Why are you whispering? We're in a library, genius. The butler told us, wait here in the library. It's not a public library, Naomi. It's privately owned in the west wing of the Vandenberg house. And we're the only people in here. Whatever. The fact that we're in a house which has its own library only proves my point. Do you smell that or not? <laughs> what are you talking about? I, I can't smell anything. Are you alright? You don't seem very comfortable. It's, it's nothing. What smell are you talking about? <laughs> you ever heard the expression, stinking rich? Well, it's a fact. You can smell it here. You smell that. It's like, I don't know, what I imagine Downton Abbey smells like. Like this ingrained reek of smugness. That's, that's just preposterous, surely it's Are not... you sure you're alright, Daryl? You seem, I don't know, stiffer than usual. <laughs> Mrs. Vanderberg will see you now. This way, please. Are you coming, Daryl? Um, yes, yes. Yeah, looks that way to me. Sorry? Bringing the paper? Don't ask. So, Jeeves? My name is Harkings, ma'am. Whatever, Jeeves. How long have you worked for the Vanderbergs? Five years, ma'am. Um, and in that time, have you ever witnessed anything that might hint at perhaps marital infidelity? Um, possibly domestic troubles? I'm sure I don't know what you mean, sir. He means shagging around or fighting. Oh, thank you, Naomi, but I don't quite think that's what Harkins was getting at. Is there a butler school or something you have to go to in order to become a butler? Are there qualifications? Have you got a degree in butlery? I carry a diploma in butler skills, as a matter of fact. Fascinating. The drawing room is through this door here. The widow Vanderberg awaits you. Have a care, please. This is the most difficult time for her. Oh, I can assure you, sir, you can rely on our discretion. Would you please not antagonise the suspects? Come on, ask Jeeves wasn't a- Wrong, Naomi. He could very well be the murderer. He had 24-hour access to Trant Vanderberg, not to mention the trust of the family. I think this job's beginning to make you paranoid, Daryl. On the contrary. I know Mrs. Vanderberg is our prime suspect, but we mustn't ignore the possibility that someone else murdered Trant Vanderberg. Or at least that Mrs. Vanderberg had an accomplice. And if she is emotionally fragile as Harkins... Harkins? The butler. Jeeves. As he would have us to believe, then I don't think that we should be going in there steamrolling her half-cocked accusations. <laughs> Speaking of half-cocked, how are you doing there, Daryl? Not entirely sure what you mean. All right, you want to be tactical about this. Fine, be a pussy. But at the very least, if there's one thing I learned from Beverly Hills Cop, it's that you have to put your suspect on the back foot from the word go. Ah, a uh, little bit of good cop, bad cop, you think, yes? Good call. I'll be good cop and you be bad cop, okay? Uh, w no, wait, I, I've never been bad cop before. Just channel your inner prick, Daryl. <laughs> Shouldn't be much of a stretch. <coughs> Mrs. Vanderberg, how lovely to meet you. Thank you for taking the time to meet with us. Detectives, please come in. It's nice to meet you both. Oh, is it? Really? Can I fetch you a drink? Coffee would be fine, thank you. Just try not to stain the cups with your blood on your hands. Sorry? <laughs> Private joke there, madam. Sorry, yes, coffee. Jesus Christ, dial it down a notch, eager the beaver. We're just getting started. I told you I've never been bad cop before. Why do I have to be bad cop? You're clearly worse than I am. Can we just please swap? No! Listen, you're doing great at being terrible. Just keep up the bad work. Here you are. There's cream and sugar on the tray also. Hawkins prepared it fresh. Thank you ever so much. Oh, thank you so much. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, whatever. Assuming it isn't poisoned. I want you to listen to me. Because I'm bad, alright? Bad? Doing great, hun. <laughs> yes, I'm really rather bad. So don't mess with me. Why don't you just tell me why you did it, hmm? Was it for the money? Excuse me? Oh, don't play dumb with me, you silly bitch. It's all over your face. You're as guilty as bloody well can be. 
can't say I understand what you're inferring, Detective, but I certainly do not appreciate your tone. I think what my partner is trying to say is that there seem to be some rather unusual circumstances surrounding your late husband's murder. Trent wasn't... Trent was murdered? Of course he was murdered. Do you expect us to believe he shot himself in the back six times? Need to have the aim of Lee Harvey Oswald to pull that one off. My God! This is just horrible. I must admit, I had my suspicions. Oh, and when were your suspicions aroused, Mrs. Vanderberg? Could it possibly have been when you were repeatedly shooting your husband? You monster! Or maybe you got someone else to pull the trigger for you, hmm? An accomplice? What about Jeeves out there? Now you're getting into I don't know where you think you've gotten this information from, but the police cleared me of any wrongdoing. Why, not a day had gone by since then that I haven't wept. I'm amazed you've got any working tear ducts left from all the plastic surgery. Come on. We can place you in the house with access to the weapon. What are you planning here? Money dried up from your glamour modelling days? So you bump off poor old Trent and buy the butler silence with sexual favours? Why, you sick, sick! Hawkins has been a tremendous help, especially these last few days. <laughs> yes, I'll bet he has. <laughs> Daryl? Oh, God. I said bad cop, <coughs> not thug. You didn't have to spit in her face. I have never, ever been so in... Oh. Oh. I am just so sorry. That went down the wrong way. I'm a little nervous, you see. I've, I've just never acted like this before and... Oh, God, here, let me help you. Here, I've got something that'll help. Oh, my God. What is that? Why have you got an erection? What's wrong with you? Oh, oh no, this oh, this really isn't what it looks like. I mean, well, obviously, yes, it is, but that's not... I, I was reaching for my handkerchief in my pocket and... And grabbed your dick instead? Oh, I'm glad you seem to derive so much pleasure from my misery, you sick, sick man. This interview is over. Harkins will show you both out. What the fuck, Daryl? I'm telling you, I don't know what happened. I can't seem to get rid of this. Note to self, charge double for the horse Viagra. Pardon me? Nothing. Come on, let's get out of here before Jeeves sets the hounds on us. Can't you walk any faster? Well, I'm sorry, Naomi, but I'm having some difficulty. <sighs> Do you want me to take care of that for you? What? Wait, did you... Did you just... Are you trying to have sex with me? Jesus Christ, you pervert! No! Right. Um, good. It just meant a hand job. Bloody hell. So, Detective Wells. Yes, boss. I asked you to delay the investigation by a few days, and it's safe to say you took my request and ran with it. It wasn't me. It was Daryl that spat in her face and then waved his heart on her. All of which I'm sure is somehow your fault, Detective Wells. So tell me, how exactly are we supposed to go about solving this bloody case now that Mrs. Vanderburg has hit us with a restraining order? And where the hell is Detective Potts anyway? He's... Taken a couple of personalities. For Christ's sake, what am I meant to tell Lacey Rumford? Sorry your investigation has grown to a staggering halt, but it turns out my team of detectives are about as competent as Scottish Labour. But don't worry because they've taken a few days off to think about it, and they'll be back on course with a new lead just as soon as they've mastered the art of trying to bloody tie their own shoelaces. Bye bye, lucrative daily pay, so long, jackpot payout. And you lot might as well start looking for new bloody jobs. I'm sure they're hiring at McDonald's. I wear slip-ons. Get out of my sight, you muppet. Horton, it was good while it lasted. But you have to face facts. You're surrounded by imbeciles. Imbeciles you hired yourself. Or at least you'd be if any of them actually bothered to show up for work. Ah, well, here's to the good times. You're looking a little sour around the mouth there this morning, boss. What's up? A restraining order? Wow, Naomi really outdid herself this time. And just where the hell have you been? What time do you call this to be dragging yourselves into the office? I called about five minutes to you thanking your lucky stars I work here. What are you talking about, son? Spit it out. Well, after I heard about Daryl and Naomi's catastrophic screw-up at the Vanderberg estate... I decided to look into some alternative sources of information. 
Such as? I spent most of last night at a bell and whistle down at the quayside. The gay bar? No, the one where the media people hang out. How many times? Pretty much the same thing, I thought. Good point. But anyway, I was there when I ran into Trevor Doyle. That investigative reporter from the Post that's never out of court for libel. That's the fella. Anyway, he had a few and he was particularly chatty last night. Everyone was giving him a wide berth because when he's drunk, he has a habit of boring the absolute breasticles off everybody and everything who will listen to him at times. He's being sued and thrown out of hotels and what have you. It's like he's some sort of badge of honour that he's just a widely regarded low-life creep. But he recognised me and bought me a drink. If this story ends with you going back to his for a nightcap, you can stop right oh, there. Oh, no, 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 no. Listen to me. Listen to me. Like I said, he was in a chatty mood and he got to telling me about his latest scandal he's been looking into. Well? He's been snooping into corporate theft, specifically a recent and very lucrative government defence contract which was originally going to be awarded to Future Computing Incorporated but which was of a last minute underhandedly scooped by, have a guess who? Vanderberg Technology! Correct, and by all accounts, Pepe Redmond, the head of Future Computing, was absolutely furious and made thinly veiled threats to several people on the life of Trent Vanderberg. Ross, this is incredible. You might have just saved our bacon. Oh, if I didn't think you'd enjoy it so much, I'd bloody kiss you. Get on that. Start looking into Future Computing. Try and arrange us a meeting with Redmond. We're going to have to keep this absolutely secret. Understand, not a word to anyone. Right you are, sir. What are you doing? Oh, just deleting a few tweets. Never mind, go about your business. Don't worry about it. Oh, for Christ's sake. Gamble, episode two, Bad Cop, Bad Cop was written by James Hamilton and Callum Brawley. It starred David MacDonald as Horton Gamble and as Harkins the Butler. It also starred Lorna Logan as Naomi Wells, Peter Greenwood as Ross Bacharach, Callum Brawley as Daryl Potts, Claire Wilson as Marianne Vanderberg and James Hamilton as Palmer. Gamble was created by James Hamilton, Mark Andrew and Callum Brawley and is produced by Mark Andrew and James Hamilton. It is a Performance Works and Sugar Radio co-production for Sugar Radio and airs Monday nights at 8.30pm on sugarradio.co.uk. Want to listen again or download the podcast? Go to gamblepi.podbean.com or find it in your iTunes feed and it's completely free to download. Join the mystery. Find us on Twitter at gamble underscore pi. This one with the knob on top. I can move him this way, right? Ah, the bishop. No, it can only move diagonally. Right. Deal with that, Palmer. Oh, I will. Checkmate. Ha! What? Checkmate. You're done, Naomi. Now pay up. You cheated. I think you'll find it's called superior intellect, Naomi. Come on, you owe me 20 quid. Cough up, you loser. Watch that tone, Palmer. Oh, oh, what? You lose a chess again? Come on, bitch. Show me the money. Bitch. I'll show you who's a bitch. Bitch. Guys, turns out the guy is cheating on his wife. But you'll never believe with who. Jesus Christ, what the hell happened in here? (laughs) (laughs) Hi, boss. So, um, listen, you don't happen to have any Vaseline on you, do you? I appear to have, um, misplaced my bishop.